Welcome to Thriller Recaps. Today, I am explaining the movie, Columbiana, explaining every scene as it happens. Watch till the end, and please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this. The movie begins in 1992, in Bogota, Colombia. Fabio Restrepo informed his boss, drug baron Don Luis Sandoval, that he wanted to leave his criminal life behind. Don Luis tried to change Fabio's mind, but he wasn't successful. Fabio handed all things belonging to Don Luis to him as they shared a hug, bidding each other goodbye. Then Fabio left. Don Luis ordered his enforcer, Marco, to kill Fabio. Fabio felt that Don Luis was going to come after him and his family, and they didn't have much time to leave. When he got home, he told his wife, Alicia, that they had ten minutes to pack, so she jumped into action. Fabio removed a computer memory card loaded with information on Don Luis' business from the back of a picture frame which he gave to his nine-year-old daughter, Catalia, telling her it's her passport out of there. He also gave her the card of someone in the embassy, as he wrote down the address of her uncle Emilio in Chicago. Finally, he gave her his mother's Catla orchid necklace, telling her that they named her after it. A gang of armed men arrived at the house, so the family tried to use the back door, but they were trapped. Fabio and Alicia got themselves guns, and a shootout began, which led to Fabio and Alicia being gunned down right in front of Catalia. Marco asked Catalia if she was in possession of something belonging to Don Luis, but she was silent. So he asked her what she wanted. Catalia stabbed his palm with a knife, telling him that what she wanted was to kill Don Luis. Then she fled out through the window, climbing down the building fluidly. She swallowed the memory card so as not to lose it. Catalia ran through people's homes as she was chased by Marco's men. She hid inside a water tank, undetected, while Marco's men searched around. After coming out of the tank, she walked down the street and was chased again by Marco and his men, who were unrelenting. However, she escaped through a small underground passage. She found herself in the urban city part of Bogota, where she located the U.S. Embassy to seek asylum. She showed the soldiers at the gate the card her dad had given her. They showed her to the card owner, who asked her what she wanted to give to them. She made herself vomit on his table, removed the memory card from her vomit, and handed it over to him. He was shocked by the content on the card after checking it. He asked her if she knew what the card was, and she replied that the card was her passport. So, she was granted passage to the United States. She was given a passport as well as some cash. She feigned wanting to use the restroom, only to run away from the American official responsible for her. She paid for a train ticket to Chicago with the cash she had been given in order to locate her uncle Emilio. Catalia used the address to track Emilio down in a sketchy neighborhood in Chicago. She handed the address to a man who went to inform Emilio of her presence. He interrupted Emilio, who was busy beating up a man, but stopped when Catalia's name was mentioned. Emilio met her, and they hugged. He told her that he had thought she was dead, like her parents. Catalia started sobbing for all she had gone through. The next day, Catalia joined her uncle Emilio and grandmother, Mama, for breakfast. She asked Emilio about the room she had slept in, and he told her it belonged to his son, who had been killed. Catalia then told Emilio that she wanted him to teach her to become a killer, to which Emilio agreed. He bribed a school principal to get her admitted in the middle of an academic year. Catalia wasn't pleased with this development, and she told him that a school couldn't teach her to be a killer. She said if he didn't want to teach her, she would find another way. Emilio pulled out his gun and started shouting, scaring the people around him. He told her that she needed to learn how to navigate the world, which she would only learn in school. Otherwise, she would be caught in five years. Reluctantly, she agreed to go to school. Fifteen years later, in California, a grown-up and drunk Catalia drove into a police car. She was arrested and taken to the police station. The police chief checked her purse but didn't find an ID, only a library card with the name Valerie Phillips. He told her all her charges, but she was barely listening. That night, U.S. Marshal Warren led an arrested criminal, Gennaro Rizzo, to the station for overnight holding. Meanwhile, a police officer accidentally spilled coffee on Catalia. When the officer left, Catalia rose up and removed her wigs. She removed her clothes, put on a catsuit, opened the cell doors, and then sneaked up to the camera to change its direction. Taking the spoon from the cup, she also filled the dispenser with water, which she carried to the electrical room. There, she used it on the ventilator machine to turn it off, allowing her to pass through just before it was turned back on. In the restroom, she knocked out the U.S. Marshal standing guard at Rizzo's cell. Using his unconscious body, she gained entrance to the place where Rizzo was held. Taking the unconscious marshal's gun, she ordered Rizzo to remove his shirt, which he complied with. She then shot him, 
alarming the other security officers in the building. After leaving a drawing on Rizzo's torso and placing the gun in the unconscious marshal's hand, she climbed back into the ventilation shaft. Warren rushed to Rizzo's cell to find the gun with the now conscious marshal. He ordered the marshal's arrest as he pleaded his innocence, but Warren saw Rizzo dead with markings on his torso. The alarm system was activated as everyone searched for the intruder, but Catalia evaded being found and sneaked back into her cell. She changed her clothes and pretended to be asleep when Warren and the chief arrived. The next day, Catalia was informed that she had to appear in front of a judge in ten days, but she was free to go. She apologized for her behavior as her fingerprints were taken. FBI agent James Ross was brought to the police station and ordered a total lockdown, but Catalia sneaked out before it could be done. She headed to her hotel, covering her face from the cameras there. Catalia went somewhere to pick up her belongings, then changed her clothes in the restroom. She used a payphone to inform Emilio that she had taken care of the target. He told her he had something for her, and she promised to be back in two days. Agent Ross discussed with Agent Williams that Rizzo's killer was the same person who had previously killed 21 other people, with their cases still unsolved. Ross thought the killer was trying to send a message, so he ordered the signature drawing of the Catla flower to be published in all newspapers and magazines to reach its intended recipient. CIA agent Steve Richard, who handled Don Lees, visited him at his residence in New Orleans, USA. He showed Don Lees the drawing that had been published in the newspaper. Don Lees recognized the drawing as one of his men, Fabio's. Richard told Don Lees to find the person responsible for the killings and then left. Don Lees blamed Marco for not killing Catalia, putting them in a tough spot. He ordered Marco to find Catalia and finish the job. Catalia got back to her apartment, where she took a shower and cleaned up her gun. Agent Ross informed his team that the victims of the killer were bad people, and he believed the perpetrator was in their police station. He ordered them to do background checks on everyone in the station before the assassination. Known as Jennifer to her artist boyfriend Danny Delaney, Catalia surprised him in his apartment. They got intimate together, but she sneaked off in the morning. She met with Emilio at a laundromat. Emilio told her that her grandmother would like to see her. He gave her a new target, Willie Woogard, a Ponzi schemer who had made millions of dollars and was currently in Mexico. He showed her a newspaper with her signature drawing and asked her about the marks she had been drawing on her target's bodies. He pleaded with her to stop because it would endanger the lives of the whole family, but she refused. She said it had been her plan to avenge the deaths of her parents, and it would all stop once she fulfilled it. She asked him to keep backing her up. Ross got his first tip of the case when he was informed that the drawing was a Catalia flower from Colombia, recognized by the janitor. Catalia went to her safe house, where she kept her two bulldogs. She greeted her grandfather, Pepe, whom she found there fixing a truck. She removed some cash and a Mexican passport from her locker for her trip. She sneaked into Willie's well-secured mansion in Mexico through his pool, which had sharks swimming inside. She then went to his room and saw him sleeping with a few girls draped all over him, but she didn't shoot. He woke up to find the strange drawing on him and went out to check. Finding his security people all dead, he headed towards the pool, where he encountered Catalia. She shot him, sending him into the pool, where he was mauled to death by the sharks. Agent Richard read about Willie's death in the newspaper, just as he got a call from Agent Ross. Ross told him that he was in charge of the recent killings. He also mentioned the symbol found on the victims, saying that all his efforts to research more on it had not gone through because the CIA kept denying him access. Richard informed him to file a formal request in order to get the information he needed, and then he hung up. Marco arrived at Chicago airport with some assassins when he got a call from a rattled Richard, who informed him that the FBI was onto him. He had to take care of the killer as soon as possible. Marco told the assassins that they were going to question every Colombian they found downtown. Catalia went to Danny's apartment and read a letter he left, saying that he was heading to New York. Agent Williams showed Ross the police station footage of Catalia being brought to the station with suspicion that she was their killer, but Ross dismissed her. He stated that it wasn't possible for the killer to have been a woman. Danny asked Catalia about herself, but she wasn't forthcoming with any information. She succeeded in getting him off her back when she told him a little about herself. The next day, he took a picture of her while she was asleep, waking her up. She rushed out of the apartment without giving him an explanation, remembering that she had a meeting with Emilio. She met with Emilio at a library. He informed her that Don Luis was searching for her and that some people had been killed, including his friend. He cut ties with her, not wanting to be dragged into it with his family, and then he walked away. Catalia broke down in tears. Meanwhile, Danny told a friend about Catalia, showing him the picture he took of her. 
he ran out when he saw a traffic police officer writing him a ticket, leaving his phone behind. His friend sent Catalia's picture to his sister-in-law, who worked for the police. He asked her to help him run her identity into the system. She replied that she could get fired, but she agreed after he mentioned that it was for Danny. Meanwhile, Ross got a notification on Catalia's photo from the background check. He checked the system to pinpoint where the background check was being carried out and found it. He deployed a team to the police station. Catalia joined her uncle and grandmother at church. Her grandmother was overcome with tears of happiness seeing her and told Emilio what a nice surprise it was to see Catalia. Emilio and his family were unaware they were being watched on their way back home by Marco Ross got a match for Catalia, comparing her picture to the station's footage. Catalia called Danny to chat with him until he mentioned that he took her picture while she had been sleeping. On hearing this, she was alarmed and asked him who else had seen the picture too. Agent Ross and his mobile unit tapped into her phone call and were able to get her location. They flooded her apartment building as she watched them through the cameras she had installed all over the building. She sneaked out of her apartment and went into another apartment, where she took a gun she had hidden in the ceiling. The authorities didn't find her inside her apartment, but then William noticed the cameras in the garage were blown out, so everyone headed there. She escaped through a vent just as the authorities stormed the garage. Ross ordered a thorough search of every part of the garage. Catalia dressed up as she passed through a railway. She went to her family's house, only to find them brutally murdered. She cried with regret, asking for forgiveness for leading misfortune to them. She waited for Ross at his home, where she confronted him, wanting him to reveal Don Luis's location. He explained that he hadn't made much leeway with the case because the CIA kept denying him access to information. She told him how Don Luis had killed her parents and the remaining members of her family. She threatened to kill every member of his family unless he helped her find him. Ross met with Richard to get him to give up the address, explaining that Catalia had threatened his family. But Richard showed indifference, so Ross went to leave. Catalia called Ross, telling him to inform Richard that he had ten seconds before she killed him with her sniper. He told Ross that the window was bulletproof, so she shot through the window past him, frightening him enough to give her Don Luis location. Catalia armed herself with guns of all kinds, taking her dogs along as well. Then she went to the land surveyor to get the floor plan of Don Luis mansion, threatening to shoot the chief surveyor. Marco strategized with his team on how to secure the building, but suddenly a bomb was launched at them, sending them flying. Marco hid Don Luis behind a secret wall that opened up to a small enclosure. Catalia shot at the gang, wiping out the entire group. Marco hid inside a bathroom, realizing that his gun didn't have any bullets. Catalia cornered him in the bathroom. Marco told her that she must have been waiting for this moment for a very long time, and she responded that she had. They engaged in combat, and she stabbed Marco in the throat with a part of her disassembled gun, killing him. Meanwhile, Don Luis fled the mansion in a vehicle. Catalia called Don Luis using Marco's phone, and he picked it up, thinking it was Marco. He taunted her about not being able to catch him, and swore to find and kill her because he would never be where she expected him to be. Catalia responded that he was exactly where she wanted him to be, which confused him. He understood her statement when he saw the dogs at the back of the vehicle, which she had planted there. She ordered the dogs to attack, and they tore Don Luis to pieces. Danny was being interrogated by Ross. He told Ross about his relationship with Catalia. He asked for a cup of coffee, and Ross stepped out to get it. While Ross was out, Catalia called Danny from a payphone. He asked her some questions, and she answered. Then he told her that he loved her, but they were interrupted by Ross, who was informed about the call. He took the phone from Danny, but Catalia cut the call short before leaving on a bus.